Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the festival of dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hands. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Well, some of you know that most of what I learned from the Harry Potter series came from my wife, who's the big fan. But I, learned, I pick up a little bit here and there. I remember one thing about it that made me think of this gospel, that in that wizarding world at their school of Hogwarts, there was this place called the Room of Requirements, and that room contained all of the secrets that could help someone who was in need. But the doorway to the room was invisible, right? You had to know where to go, and then you had to be in need. And the saying about that room was, if you already know, you need not ask. If you need to ask, you will never know. And I hear that ringing through my head when I hear Jesus' talk to these people gathered around him. They're saying, Jesus, just speak plainly to us. Tell us, are you the Messiah or not? And I hear Jesus' answer, something akin to like, well, if you have to, if you have to ask, then I'm not going to tell you, right? <laughs> Sounds like an argument in my house sometimes. <laughs> The problem is it makes me nervous. I struggle with that because I, what if we struggle to hear? Because people, I don't think I hear huh, all the time. Sometimes I don't think I hear at all. And what does that mean if you can't hear the shepherd's voice? What does Jesus mean? What is this good shepherd Sunday about on this fourth Sunday after Easter? Let me tell you what I do know. I sit back here oftentimes and, um, and I listen and I, maybe I hear a baby cry out. We have a lot of babies in this congregation. I hear a baby cry out and my ears perk up because I have a seven-month-old at home. I'm used to listening to that. And I'm tuned into that voice. I can tell you in an, pretty much after a couple cries whether it's my son or not, right? There's just a way that I can tell that. Then on the other hand, I do this podcast, which some of you know about, and so uh, God knows I got to get better. So I got to listen to myself to figure out how do I get better? How do I improve? And I listen to my voice on that podcast and I feel sorry for you people <laughs> because this is not as pleasing as I think it sounds. Here's my point is how can I be so on point listening to one thing and so catch one voice in an instant and then so oblivious to the closest voice I know and how it sounds? So here we are in this mystery of living in faith. And what then are, does these things have to say about the nature of God? I wonder if it has something to do with what we are looking for, and what we pay attention to. Because in this gospel, those are gathered around Jesus. They are expecting one kind of a Messiah. It was the day of dedication. That's Hanukkah to you and me. That's when this gospel interchange happens. That's what was on people's mind. Hanukkah was the day when the Jewish uh, Maccabees revolted, when they prevailed against the Seleucid ruler who had claimed and desecrated their temple, and they withstood and they took it back and they cleansed it. That was what, that's what Hanukkah is about. And on that day, they waved palm branches as a moment, in that moment of victory. That on the day of dedication is what they expected of Jesus, a Messiah. They expected a ruler, a conqueror, someone that would help them to wave those branches again and cry victory. But Jesus comes pointing, to a, di pointing a different direction, saying the secret to having life, the secret to having all that you need is being willing to give it away. 
See, we can get caught up, too, in what we're looking for. We get caught up in worldly definitions of authority or success. But Jesus points us where we aren't always paying attention. So I had all these things mulling around in my head, swimming in different directions, because all of these readings are great readings, and I didn't know where I wanted the sermon to go, so I did what I often do. I went for a run to try to let it all settle and shake down in my head. And I ran a path I normally do, which comes out of my neighborhood, and I ended up take, turning at this Methodist church over by my house. And for some reason this time, I looked at the, the, that church, and I saw something I hadn't seen before. They had these stained glass windows around on different walls of their sanctuary, like we do, but these were smaller circles. And I didn't see what was in them before, but when I looked closer, I saw that each window depicted the hands, hands of God, and they were doing different things. One was kind of coming up out of the water, I would imagine, as creating the universe. One was holding an Easter lily. One was holding a cross as a symbol of salvation. These hands that were doing all of these things. And And suddenly I started asking myself the question, You know, maybe sometimes I'm so busy wanting just a straight answer from the face of Jesus. Just tell us plainly that I miss and don't see the hands of the good shepherd. And what if it's in those actions? What if it's in those actions of the hands of the good shepherd and what they're doing that we could find the promise of living in this Easter reality together? So here's then what came out of that. Because I was running and I'm thinking, <laughs> look at the passage from Revelation. Those hands that are waving those prom branches, they're holding signs of that triumph. And the promise is what? That God's hand will wipe away every tear from the eyes of people. These are hands of the shepherd, of comfort and hope. Then I thought about the story from Acts. Peter prays for Tabitha, who all the widows are mourning for because she cared for them. Peter prays and she wakes up and Peter reaches out his hand to bring her up. Peter's hand reaches out to the ones whose hands never tired of doing God's good work among hurting people. To bring back to life the one who offered life and hope to those who needed it most. These are shepherd hands of healing and life. And then I was ran ran a little bit more, and I thought about the gospel, and I said, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I will give them eternal life. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Shepherd, hands of protection and belonging. These are the hands and the promise of the empty tomb of Easter, that God is our shepherd, We shall not be in want. We will have what we need. We will be accompanied by the presence of that shepherd, guided down right paths and protected. We will be comforted in the darkest valleys. That's the promise of resurrection. That that future promise is also a present reality of goodness and mercy and preparing a table like this one where there will be no more enemies where all are welcome, that you would know that promise for yourself today, that God would feed you. That's our mission here, to be God's heart lived out by our human hands, that God who loves and cares for this world, who holds us safe in grace, will feed us by God's holy hand at this table. The hands that also come alongside you, you know those, you know the people, you know who they are. The hands of comfort and protection that come around you at a time in your life when you needed it. That's where God cares for this world. Because we want I want to look straight into the face of God and I want an answer and I miss all the ways that the hands of the shepherd care for us and give us what we need. Because it's by those hands that we too then are compelled to participate in that Easter mission. So we may live daily in that mystery of faith, and we may struggle at times to hear plainly the Savior speak to us, and those are often the times when life can successfully attempt to make us feel unworthy or unsafe. 
but dear friends in Christ. The empty tomb tells us to proclaim to those circumstances and to this world the even bigger reality of the Easter season. To proclaim about the never-ending and unconditional love of the shepherd's voice and the comfort of being known that no one will snatch us away from that hand of love. So thanks be to God. Amen.